Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about Amazon Location, its use cases, and how it works and what problem it will be solving and go into quick demo on setting of Amazon Location. But before we get started, please like, subscribe, and thank you for sharing this video and subscribe to our newsletter. Check out our product cloudmysite.com where you could get to WordPress and free hosting. So let's get started on what exactly is Amazon Location. Amazon Location provides access to high quality location data that you can use in your applications. This service provides cost-effective location-based service using high quality data from global trusted providers such as ESRI, Here Technologies, Open Data Maps, Grab Maps. With Amazon Location, you can add maps points of interest, geocoding, routing, geofences, and tracking to your applications. So when we face barriers in integrating location data into your applications, we often see on how we could go about getting this data. Like there's a truck location that we want to track and it needs to send constant updates. Like when we were working for FedEx, we used to send the tracking information of where the truck is. That is where this Amazon location service could be very helpful. So it's Amazon location help with the visualized location information on a map. It also helps for search points of interest. Amazon location provides functionalities for use cases such as geomarketing, asset tracking, and delivery applications. Geofencing, it'll help set up virtual boundaries, which are also called geofences, around specific areas that can trigger actions or notifications when devices or users enter or exit those zones. What are the benefits? It will help provide security alerts, example, unauthorized entry into restricted area, example, sending promotional offers to customers near a store, and it can initiate an event that prompts a notification when a customer who placed an order on the mobile app is nearby. Additionally, you can build geomarketing features so retailers can send discount codes to customers who are near their target stores. And also what it helps in is real-time asset tracking and management. What is the use case? And this is an example I was giving of FedEx, where businesses with fleets or vehicles, delivery companies, ride-sharing services, even Uber could personalize the service and can track their real-time locations on a map. Route planning and optimization is another the use case where it would help in calculating optimal routes for navigation, considering factors such as traffic, road closures, and preferred modes of transportation. Another example could be a food delivery application with Amazon location features can automatically notify the restaurant when a delivery driver is nearby, thus reducing wait times and maintaining the quality of the food. A few other things that you should be keeping mind about Amazon location, and this is something we always tell our customers, consider the principle of least pr privilege access by granting the minimum required access to your resources. Always have observability. That is consider setting up your monitoring. You could use CloudWatch. You could use SNS to send a notification. Look into using custom data sets. That is, we cannot do upload as of now custom data sets to be used with features of Amazon location. Consider the service limits and be frugal in cloud. This is a sample in eventing-based architecture where we have Amazon location the service that we use that will be sending the data to Lambda that in turn will be processing those events and it could send it to SNS or even Lambda can directly notify the customer of a particular event. Like say there's a location, there's a customer nearby a restaurant and then the restaurant could send offers 5% off for you to eat. Those kind of offers could be very enticing to a customer that is already nearby. Now I'll show a quick demonstration here in the portal of Amazon AWS and I'll go to location. You will need to activate the service, something I've already activated. You can create a map, provide the name, enter the name for the map resource such as YouTube test map and test map. For our YouTube users, you do, you could just give anything. You could leave the, all of this as default and these are the different providers you could use and these are the different maps that you have options of considering. So you can check this out and leave this out, the default optional, accept the terms and conditions and click create map. So you return to the maps panel and a console banner confirms that your test resource was successfully created. In addition, some of the details for your test resource are displayed as well. Now next configure a place index 
which serves as a geographical search engine for your map. Under Manage Resources, click here. And this is where we could see the places. And you see here at the place index aspect. The place index serves as a geographical search engine for your map. Give a YT test place index. I'll leave the default. Choose the terms and conditions and create place index. Now you'll get a message that it's created. Now create a route calculator. Provide the name and leave the default options, accept the terms and conditions and click create fraud calculator. Now under managed resources, which is over here, we come to the geofence location and create a geofence collection. Give a name and I'll follow the naming convention ahead. YT test and choose geofence and leave all others as defaults and click create geofence location. Now we'll create a tracker. Follow the naming convention, leaves everything as default Scroll to the end and create tracker. Confirm that your test resource was successfully created. You can link your tracker to your geofence, which then evaluates the location, updates your tracker receives against the geofences you have configured. So we'll click link geofence collection. This will evaluate the location updates your tracker receives against the geofences that you have configured. And after this, your tracker is now associated with the geofence collection you configured. Now with the resources created in the previous section, try the map places and a given address. Uh, in this case, give an address of uh, California. Now this is where you could select over here and it will give you one particular location. Now you could also get the route, go to the route option, do a calculate route, calculate route by car, departure time, as well as by truck or walking. And you could have the different options that you could provide as part of the tracker. The geofence, you could click this option, click the continue button, create geofences in the interactive map display, choose shape, draw geofence, do a polygon. You could map the polygon. It could have n number of shapes. Next, I'll go into the specific demo, which is using a solution from GitHub. As part of today's demo is we have this AWS solution library samples. This is the URL, something that is going to be there in the blog which shows that we're going to do for the location setup. First thing, clone the Git repository. You could use GitHub desktop, or if you're comfortable with the bash or a CLI option, you could do a Git clone and you can clone this repository. This is the one to the whistle. Navigate to the particular directory. Now in here, we need to install the visual components. So for which what we will do is we will run npm install. This is nor performance manager, something a lot of the developers should be using. There would be lots of videos on how to go about setting up NPM. Do NPM install. This is where you will see that we install the required packages. Once the packages in are installed, we need to install infrastructure, including location service tracker and geofence resources. First of all, you should be logging in uh, for which so just simply copy the commands from AWS and access keys. Just copy this for Mac OS and Linux. Go back to your WSL and paste. This should have your user setup available to use. This is where we have the tracking data streaming. We have the deploy underscore cloud formation dot SH. This is the script that we will need to use. And you can check out the code and you can see how exactly this is working CD. And this is where I need to run the command. This is the command you will need to run. Change your region. In my case, I'm using US East one. And this is going to be exporting and creating the CloudFormation stack. Give it some time for your resources to be created. We could go to the portal as well and see the resources being created. Go to CloudFormation. And to know more about CloudFormation best practices, we have put a video together on how you could go about using CloudFormation. So you see that there are these resources that are being created. We can check in CloudFormation on the status of the resources. This is where you see these three stacks are created. If we go into each one, you could check what resources have been created. You could see this is the data stream, Kinesis stream. You can click the resource and check the status of it. You can check it out yourself. You can tweak the code and you can see how other behaviors you want to have. There are other resources for Kinesis stream. The serverless repo, which is the Lambda function. Likewise, what IAM role is created for geofencing and what exactly will be created for the logs. The geofence location is created 
and the rule that is created. If you want, you can also come in here, see the data that has been imported from CloudFormation. You can download example JSON. So this is how you will be able to see the data that is part of the geofence setup. Now we have a base infrastructure setup. We could de deploy the IoT or information of things resources. This will include a resource engine action to update location service with a Lambda function, as well as required IAM permissions. So for that, what we will do is we will go back to our code, go to the CF folder, and this is the IoT resources that we are going to be creating. I am role, the policy, the Lambda function, the code of the function in our terminal, navigate to the CF folder, and this is the command to create the resource. We can go back to the console, we can refresh, and we'll see our IoT resources are also spinning up. Let's give it a few minutes because it does take time to have these resources created. And once created, we can resume. The stack is the created. In CLI, to check the status, I can run this command that it's working and the status is successful. Now, what, what we need to do is we need to configure visualization, the front-end application. In, in our code, open tracking data streaming, expand the SRC folder, and the configuration file is what we need to edit. And I populate the region of the US East, but when you do, you will need to ensure your region is correct. We will need to get the read-only identity pool ID and write-only identity pool ID. We'll get these values from CloudFormation. In CloudFormation, go to the tracking. So this is the read-only identity pool and paste it here. Likewise, this is the write-only and copy this ID. And we can also get these IDs from the command line as well. So I could use this command to get the data from tracking and geofencing sample. This is the command. You could just copy it from here in case you don't want to go to the console and you can just verify. Yes, it was same. Likewise, copy the other one as well. The values are now correctly set. Save the configuration file. This is where I will need to run npm start. This will set up Vt. If you have not set up, you can always run npm install and it should now bring up your browser. If it does not, you can always copy this URL and open in your browser. The application is now loaded. Click the run demo and you will see their truck two is moving. And now it's saying this received the notification. Truck has entered the warehouse vicinity, south warehouse vicinity. We could also go to trackers and you could see that the geofence is running and all this data is also available here. You can commit to all these resources that you created and you will be able to see the geofences that you had set up earlier. You can have this application also deployed. Having it hosted and accessible from anywhere would be even better. And you could upload your completed application, say to an S3 bucket or to Amplify, and you can deploy it in CloudFront. We have tutorials on how you could deploy an NPM application to CloudFront and there's CloudFront distribution that you will need to set up if you want to have it externally available. But it's a very good application where a lot of use cases that you could use for your customers or your clients. If any issues, please drop in a comment and we'll be more than glad to help you out. And if any of your customers need consultancy on using the location service, please feel free to contact us. Once again, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. Drop in a comment and also subscribe to our newsletters. Check out our website, cloudmysite.com, for any of your hosting or web design requirements. Thank you and have a good day.